Hi guys, welcome to our second part on on corals and coral reefs. So I thought this part we would talk a little bit about corals themselves, the animals that are the corals. Um, remember what phylum corals belong to? We just talked about it. Remember Nidaria and class? The class that corals belong to is Anthozoa. So you should probably remember that. And all corals have the body style of the polyp. They are only polyp. That's what class Anthozoa is. They only have a polyp stage. So um, there is one kind of coral that's, that's not an Anthozoan, and that's fire coral. If you remember, fire coral was in the class Hydrozoa. And Hydrozoa has a reduced medusa stage, so it does really have a little jellyfish stage. Um, and it has really powerful nematocysts. You saw it when we talked about Nidaria and we talked about um, fire coral. This is fire coral. And if you remember, these little things here are the, are the zooids or the polyps themselves. These little fuzzy things. Okay, so that's fire coral. Um, let's, um, okay. So not all corals build reefs. There are some corals that are, uh, that don't leave a skeleton behind. The soft corals have a, um, have a, a, a spicules for a skeleton and the spicules are, um, what give it its shape. Uh, there are a group of soft corals that don't leave any skeleton behind. Um, one of the other anthozoans is gorgonians. Gorgonians are the sea fans and sea whips. Let me show you what they look like. This is a sea whip. I took that in Bonaire. And th these are some more. These are the sea whips. So let's let's talk for a second. These are sea whips. These are hard corals. Okay. And the hard corals you can see are kind of stony, and they leave a skeleton behind. When these guys die they fall apart and there isn't anything left for the for to build the reefs on okay here's a sea fan um this is another gorgonian um this is they're really pretty they're really feathery um they're pretty big um but but those are sea fans this this structure here is a sea fan okay so the coral polyp Let's talk about the animal that makes up the, the coral. Um, it is made up of a colonial polyp. They have the, the polyp itself is an upright kind of cylinder with a ring of tentacles. Um, reef building corals are colonial. That means that there's hundreds to hundreds of thousands of individuals that make up the, the colony, that make up the coral that you think of as, as coral. Um, the digestive system of all the polyps remains connected, uh, so when one polyp eats, they all get nutrition. Um, some reef building corals are single polyps, but not very many. The mushroom corals are an example of that. I'll show you a picture coming up. Um, polyps themselves lie in this cup like skeleton of calcium carbonate. Let's just, just so we, we, this is calcium carbonate carbonate. Um, so CaCO3 is calcium carbonate. We've talked about that quite a bit, so I'm not going to belabor the point. Um, okay. Over the years, they build up on each other, forming what can be massive, massive structures. I I've seen brain corals bigger than a Volkswagen Beetle. Um, I I there, some of the corals are huge. They they will actually form these reefs all together. It's, they, they can become huge. You saw um, what the Great Barrier Reef looked like from space. So it can be pretty big. So, so this is what the coral polyp looks like. This, this is, let me, oh, let me back that up. This is one coral polyp. And if I if I if I zoom in on one of those and kind of draw it, you have to excuse me because I drew 
um, I started to draw. This is what a coral polyp, a drawing of a coral polyp looks like. Let's let's talk about these different parts of the coral polyp. Um, let's see. Hold on here for a second. So in your notes, I've got these labeled. Um, so A is the whole, that's the coral polyp. Okay. B, this pink stuff here, is, the, is, is called the theca. The theca is the calcium carbonate that forms the, the skeleton of the coral. Okay. C are the tentacles. And um, they have the concentration of nematocysts. Okay. And that's where the stinging cells are. That's how the one of the ways that corals. Um, get their nutrition. They can sting small fish. They can sting zooplankton. They and they kill it and um, the they stuff it down into their mouth. We'll get there in a second. Okay, the connection between the corals is right here. So this pink stuff is all part of the coral, right? This is called the cenosarc. That's not, uh, let's, let's call D the connection. Between, between the corals, the, between the coral polyps. Okay. The real name for it is a cenosarc. All I care about is that you understand that this is where they're connected. So that if one eats, they all get nutrition. Okay. Um, e is this right here. That is the mouth slash anus, which means they kill, sting, kill, uh, and, and kill their prey, and then they stuff it down through this opening, the mouth. Okay. They digest it in the stomach. So F is the is the it's a gastrovascular cavity. Okay, the F is the gastrovascular cavity or the stomach. Okay, and so they digest in here, and then it comes back out that mouse slash anus when they when they when they produce the wastes. They also have these um, digestive filaments inside um, that I didn't put a letter on, but but these digestive filaments uh, produce digestive enzymes and. They can actually extrude those so that they can compete with each other for space on the reef. It's pretty fascinating. Okay, so you should be able to label that on your um, on your notes. So A is the polyp itself. B is the is called the theca. Theca. It is the the calcium carbonate skeleton of the um, of the polyp and the cup it sits in is called the calyx. I'll write it here. Which you read about in your um in your introduction to coral reefs. Okay. So moving right along. Um stony corals do deposit lots and lots of calcium carbonate. Um there are two kinds of two terms that you should know. Hermatypic means that they produce reefs, they produce these hard skeletons. A hermatypic means that they don't. Um, some corals grow in deeper water, they grow in colder water. They typically don't have the zooxanthellae that you've read a little bit about, but um, they they don't build reefs. So if they don't build reefs, they're called a hermatypic.
Okay. Um, and I said that. So here's a picture of, of coral polyps. During the day, they kind of fold in on each other and they kind of look like a stewed tomato. But they're kind of tiny. They're probably the size of a, of a pencil around. So that's how small the, the coral polyps tend to be. Here's some more coral polyps. And, and so, um, I wanted you to see, you, you answered some of these the other day on, um, on the, the, activity that I had you do from NOAA, but here's a nice little drawing of different kinds of shapes of corals. So the plate-like are just like that. They're kind of flat and broad um, layers, one on top of the other. Folicious are flower-like, sounds like flower, right? And crusting are those corals that kind of grow over the, the hard parts, okay? Columnar Columns, they are kind of upright um, cylinders, okay? The massive is a big boulder-like thing, and then there's branching. We'll get to the different kinds of branching in a couple of minutes. Staghorn, Elkhorn corals are these branching structures. And then these free-living uh, corals called uh, mushroom corals that, that also produce skeletons, okay? So let me show you what some, some pictures that I've taken of different ones. This is, you've seen this picture. This is a brain coral. <clears throat> they get pretty big, so they call them massive. It's kind of boulder-like. Okay, here's plate coral. You can see that I'm looking down on it. I should have been looking on the side, but um, this, this is large, flat, horizontal pieces that kind of grow one on top of another, and you can see that it looks like little plates. Okay. And crusting, you can see that this coral is growing right over the hard parts, so they call it encrusting. It forms a crust over the top. Okay, columnar. Um, I wish I had a better picture of columnar, but you can see that they have these these columns, these cylinders that kind of come up from the bottom. Um, branching. We have a couple of different kinds. This is a really good picture of staghorn coral. Um, I took this up in. Uh, Washington Sladby National Park up in Bonaire, down in Bonaire, um, but but it looks like a stag's horn, a deer's antlers. That's why they call it staghorn. And elk horn looks kind of like it, it's more flattened, but it's still branching. They get pretty big. Matter of fact, here's a picture of my brother-in-law. Um, his name is Ken, and he was right in front of one of the staghorn cor or the elk horn corals down in Bonaire that. I took his picture. So you can see they're pretty good size. Okay, there are other animals that, other organisms that are reef builders. Most of them are algae, believe it or not. Um, because there's so many different critters that make up the reefs, most or some marine biologists think they should be called biotic reefs, not coral reefs, but I think that that's um, wishful thinking because they're so well known as coral reefs that I don't think that's going to change. But the idea is that there's so much life on the reefs that make up reefs that it's not just the corals um, that some scientists believe they should be called biotic reefs. Um, we're going to talk about zooxanthellae coming up in the next installment of coral reefs. Uh, but zooxanthellae, you've read a little bit about them. They are the um, Algae that live in the tissues of the corals, um, they help the corals to produce some of the uh, calcium carbonate material for the reefs. So we'll, we'll get to those in a little bit. There are other algaes that contribute to the reef material as well. Um, there are these things called encrusting coralline algaes. Some of the coralline algaes actually produce calcium carbonate in their cell walls, which helps reduce them um, their, from predation, so it helps them quite a bit. Um, they, because they're coralline, they help to bind the reef together. The, a good way to think about it is they're the glue that holds the reef all together. So they take the pieces, grow over them, and then kind of cement them all together with the calcium carbonate in their cell walls. Um, Nearly all of the sediment on a coral reef is biogenous, which means it's from living things. Okay, uh, Halmeda is a green algae that, that puts a lot of the calcium carbonate on a reef. 
There's not a whole lot of algaes that you can see on the reef because they have to compete with other things that are encrusting. Uh, and so, but Halmeda is one of them. They put lots of calcium carbonate in their tissues. I said, like I said, to discourage grazers. Um, and then their remains accumulate and are bound together by encrusting organisms. So we'll see that coming up. Uh, other calcium carbonate producing organisms that contribute to reef material are all these things. There are shells of forams. Remember foraminifera from when we were talking about protista, some of the zooplankton, snail shells, clam shells, um, other mollusks, sea urchins that we, we haven't really talked a whole lot about them, but the spines of sea urchins. Don't worry about bryozoans, but bryozoans are these little critters that make a calcium carbonate uh, sheet. And then crustaceans too. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of things that form reef material. Um, sponges and their spicules and Sometimes the, the siliceous material that they have for skeletons will also help to contribute to making up the reef. Um, some worms, like the Christmas tree worms, actually secrete a calcium carbonate tube, which helps to produce more material for the reef. A and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop here. And um, if you would please fill out the guided notes, that would be awesome. And I will talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.